No need to fear, citizen, because we are here to tell you all about what a great hero All Might is. You could say All Might is quite all right in our book. Okay, we promise we won't do that again, but we just can't help it. All Might just brings out the cheesy heroic side of us that we won't keep quiet. We feel like Deku, watching the video of All Might saving people over and over and over again until our eyes fall out of our heads. But really, there's so much more to this character than meets the eye, so we just had to make a video all about All Might. Let's get into it, right now! Who do you think would win in a fight, Goku, Superman, or All Might? Both Goku and Superman are surprisingly similar in that they're both super strong aliens shipped off from a dying world and arriving on Earth only to develop an array of superpowers. But on the other hand, All Might is the pillar of justice that carries the weight of the world on his back with ease. You're right, it's no contest. All Might would crush those other inferior heroes with a flick of his wrist and a huge smile. Of course, All Might wasn't always this way. He didn't come from the womb radiating light and hope like some sort of luminescent baby. He also didn't become the great beacon of hope, and the reason villains need a change of underwear just by hearing his name by accident. He was a quirkless kid who was bestowed the spectacular one-for-all quirk in a time when citizens had no major heroes to believe in. So where did it all get started? Well, All Might's real name is actually Toshinori Yagi, and like we said, he was born right in the middle of rising crime rates and all for once evil influence. Given what we've seen of All Might in the series, it wouldn't be surprising if he was always the strong, passionate hero we've come to know and love, right? Actually, no. His past was filled with tragedy that not enough people tend to know about. It's well known that All Might wasn't the original holder of One for All, and was actually the eighth person to hold the amazing ability. So what were the circumstances and how he attained it? While he was a teenager, the quirkless Oshinori met Nana Shimura the seventh person to wield one for all, and she ended up mentoring him. Along with her strong sense of justice, she believed that a real hero should smile no matter how dire the situation looks. It's not only about protecting the lives of civilians, but also their hearts. People need to know that everything is okay in times of trouble, so she'd slap on a big comforting grin whenever she could. Although we know the broad strokes about All Might's former mentor, including that she died fighting all for one, the exact manner of her death isn't as well known. When the awesome My Hero Academia 2 Heroes movie was released on DVD, it included a short OVA that packed a ton of information in just a few minutes. It opens on Shimura's final fight with All For One, when she sacrificed herself so Toshinori could escape. As Gran Torino pulls Toshinori away from the battlefield, we see the future All Might like we've never seen him before. Desperate, crying, and unable to help. As Shimura faces death, we see her do something that's familiar to anyone who's watched the show. She points at All Might, indicating that it's now his time, and with one last smile, tells him that she's counting on him to save the world. No pressure, right? But it's almost exactly what happens later on when All Might is the one sacrificing himself in battle. He does the same thing to Deku, pointing at him and indicating that it's now his turn to rise up and become a true symbol of peace. It's fantastic to learn that All Might is taking cues from his former master to continue on the tradition of passing the torch down in such an awesome way. But as for the rest of the OVA, we see that Shimura's death had a huge impact on All Might. His powers weren't at top levels yet, and Gran Torino could still jump around like a crazy kangaroo and beat him up. Because All for One would be searching for All Might, wanting to destroy One for All, well, once and for all, Gran Torino encourages All Might to go to America to continue his training, and that's exactly what the hero does in order to keep Shimura's sacrifice from becoming meaningless. So right before boarding the plane, All Might finally accepts that a hero has to look the part. He styles his hair in that signature goofy way that we all know and love and forces himself to smile, ready to become a beacon of hope and the symbol of peace he always wanted to be. The My Hero Academia movie details some of All Might's time in America. While there, he rescued a few student scientists from an explosion, one of which was David Shield who was awed by All Might but noticed that the hero's suit was damaged, so offered to make him a new one. This was the start of a beautiful friendship, with David becoming All Might's sidekick and assisting him in fighting crime while building fancy new gadgets for them to use. Even though it hasn't been touched upon in the show just yet, All Might had one major sidekick, Sir Night Eye, who has the ability to see into the future. 
While their partnership hasn't been explained, with Sir Night Eye being introduced at the end of the third season, we feel we're soon about to learn a lot more about him. Of course, the biggest event of All Might's younger career was the big fight with All For One, with the hero coming out on top by crushing the villain's head like a grape. Of course, it wasn't without major costs. The epic battle left All Might critically injured with a lot of his stomach being lost, and severe respiratory damage. It put a limit on how long the hero could use one for all, meaning he switched back and forth between his muscular, inspiring hero form and his everyday skeleton-like normal body. Seriously, All Might without one for all needs to eat some sandwiches or something. Although severely injured, All Might refused to retire until he found a worthy successor that could take over for him and be the ninth holder of the one for all quirk, a quest that would lead him straight to young Deku. When Deku was younger, he idolized All Might with every fiber in his being. Deku seemed to eat, drink, and sleep All Might all the time, and dreamt of one day becoming the greatest hero in the world just like him. But at a pretty young age, Deku's hopes were shattered into a million pieces, as he found out he was one of the increasingly rare people who was born quirkless. This presented a small problem, as without powers, he was just an average human in this crazy, super-powered world. But even though he didn't have a quirk, he still possessed incredible heart and determination, and continued on his path to become a hero, even applying to UA, the top hero academy in the area. Although he didn't have powers, he was the first one to rush to Bakugo's aid when the sludge monster was trying to absorb him, even when the rest of the actual heroes surrounding the monster were too shocked to move. It was this bravery and determination that led to All Might seeing potential in the young kid, so he decided to train Deku as his successor. Talk about a dream come true. But the road to get All Might's power wasn't an easy one for Deku. One for All is crazy powerful, and not just anyone can take on its responsibilities. When they met, Deku was a fleshy weakling who looked like a strong breeze could knock him over. Taking over one for all at that moment would have probably killed Deku faster than Tenya Ida rocket boosting at top speed. Even when All Might trained Deku hard enough over the summer to secure him a cover spot on Men's Fitness Magazine, his body still wasn't able to contain and control All Might's quirk, causing Deku to break his arms and legs over and over again every time he tried to use the power. When your main goal is to break a minimum amount of body parts whenever using your quirk, it's pretty obvious you need to get stronger. As Deku continued to learn how to use his power at UA, All Might was always there, keeping a watchful eye over him as a teacher at the school. That being said, it seems to be a case of a teacher playing favorites. All Might's main goal is to train his next successor, so he takes a special interest in Deku. But we're like 90% sure he could never name the other lesser known students in Class 1A. And really, him being a teacher at UA has been a giant untapped goldmine of potential. We mostly see the students in their homeroom being taught by Aizawa, but All Might teaches a class about heroics, which just sounds awesome. Sorry to Actroplasm's mathematics class or Cementos's modern literature class, but a heroics class taught by All Might is sure to be the best class to take at the hero school. Okay, maybe we'd be interested in taking modern hero art history taught by Midnight, but not because we're super interested in the subject if you know what we mean. All Might and Deku's relationship continues to grow, with Deku facing challenge after challenge and coming up stronger each time. The USJ arc had Deku finally exert some control over his powers. The UA Sports Festival arc saw Deku learn that being a hero isn't always smashing things to bits, but also encouraging and inspiring those around him. In the Hero Killer arc, Deku not only got some real-world training and experience, but learned the history behind his new quirk. All these things were learned with All Might by his side, who guided him in the right direction, but a time was coming when All Might wouldn't be around to teach him anymore. We all knew this was coming. From the beginning, All Might had said that eventually his powers would deplete and disappear, but even armed with that knowledge, it was still heartbreaking to watch it happen. Everything was leading to this moment, a final showdown between All Might and his arch enemy All For One. In an intense battle that saw a massive amount of destruction, the two powerful titans wailed on each other over and over and over again. All Might seemed like he was fighting a losing battle. He was no longer as strong as he once was, and his powers were draining fast. It got so bad that he changed into his true skinny form in front of the cameras and the world at large. At first, the world panics at the sight of the real All Might, with All For One attacking his morale with a bombshell about his former mentor's grandson. All Might is at his lowest, then All For One delivers a killing blow, wins the fight, and takes over the world. 
No! Of course that's not what happens. The crowds watching get over their shock of seeing All Might in his regular form and start cheering him on to win, to keep fighting no matter what. With his hope restored, All Might is able to rally a last bit of strength and transform part of his body to keep going. He even cracks his signature smile. After another epic round of fighting, All Might delivers his epic United States of Smash, which finally knocks All for One unconscious. All Might is victorious, but at the cost of his abilities. When it's all over, All Might points to the camera and delivers a message very similar to his mentor's final message. You're next. The crowd thinks it's a message to all the villains out there, but Deku knows what it really means. All Might's reign as the symbol of peace is over, and it's time for Deku to rise up and take the mantle. Luckily, All Might isn't dead after this whole ordeal and is able to continue guiding Deku when needed, but his skinny form is here to stay. No matter how skeletal he looks, All Might will always be our symbol of peace, and he was such a great mentor and inspiration to Deku that we think he left the world in pretty good hands, or pretty good feet as Deku has transitioned to more of a kicking style instead of throwing punches. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into All Might from My Hero Academia. Did you learn anything new about the hero? What's your favorite thing about All Might? Let us know down in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to CBR for more awesome anime content. As always, thanks for watching.